Oh, so what we got here then? What we got here? What we have here is a. Uh, I want to say diamond select, but I'm not entirely sure that it is. Uh, it's a Star Trek select. I know that. Uh, let's have a look what's on the back. Uh, oh yes, it is. It's a diamond. Yeah, diamond select. Um, Star Trek: um, The Wrath of Khan. Uh, Khan figure. And uh, this was picked up for me by a uh, friend who was on holiday in Blackpool and he just wandered into a shop and they got this figure and uh, he showed me a picture of it and I just said like oh fuck I've got to have that how much is it and he said 13 pounds and I was like 13 pounds and he's like yeah I'm like well get it for me um, the cheapest I've been able to find it anywhere else was about 35 quid so uh, yeah that was uh, a good bit of uh, lootage so uh, yeah as per the title of this video I'm going to be opening it up and looking at it um, as we can see from the box we you know we've got the the main Khan figure here and then we have all these other different bits and you probably can't see because I'm recording this at uh, oh, 1 a.m. and uh, the light in here is just my crappy uh, main lights in the thing in the, you know in the room uh, but yeah, you can also see, or you, you you might not be able to, I don't know. Because even I'm looking at the screen on my camera and it looks dark as fuck. And usually whenever it looks dark as fuck, it means that I'll think, oh shit, it's dark. And, you know, when I put it into what they call it, actually, you know, comes out lighter. I don't know. But, uh, you know, uh, but yeah, there's uh, the um, chair from the USS Reliant and uh, a display base and everything like that. So that you can set him all up and... Uh, you know, have him in different poses and stuff. Uh, just look in the box there. We have a picture of the USS Reliant down the bottom there. Uh, and a nice picture of Khan on there. Or the actor Ricardo Montalban as he appeared in 1982 when the film was made. Uh, it's just a shame what happened to him later in life. Uh, you know, it's, it's like I say, oh, none, of, none of the, the chest piece and stuff like that. That's that's not a prosthetic. That is actually him. So he may took good care of himself, uh, but then at the end of his days, he was wheelchair bound. And uh, some, you know, but yeah, just on the back we have, uh, you know, the different uh, thingies. Like you can see the, the command chair there and the deck and everything, and Khan, and a little picture there of him sat down, and then the other other. Uh, Figures in the range, the other figure in the range that features Khan is this one, except it's called Star Trek Select Captain Kirk, and it's re it's uh, basically a scene of the uh, fight from Space Seed, where Captain Kirk and Khan go at it in the engine room. Uh, but then we have the uh, blurb on the back here. Uh, Khan, collector figure, genetically engineered human augment, Khan Noonien Singh, and his followers escaped Earth in the late 20th century and spent nearly three centuries in stasis when their ship, the SS Botany Bay, was discovered by the USS Enterprise and its passengers revived. They staged a mutiny uh, that was ultimately put down in defeat. Khan and his followers were marooned on the habitable world of SETI Alpha 5. But the world's climate turned inhospitable when SETI Alpha 4 exploded. Oh no, SETI Alpha 6, sorry, exploded. The survivors were discovered by the crew of the USS Reliant, who were seeking uninhabited worlds to test the Genesis device. Khan took control of their minds and then their ship. Now in possession of a powerful Federation vessel, uh, Khan stole Genesis and then set out on a mission of revenge, using the element of surprise to strike at his old enemy, Captain James T. Kirk. The seven-inch scale action figure of Khan Noonien Singh is based on his appearance in Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan, and features multiple interchangeable parts to create a variety of poses. He also includes the command chair of the USS Reliance, sculpted by Patrick Piggott. And I have to say, Patrick, you've done a really good job there. And, uh, yeah, just all the, the other bits there. I mean, you can get a figure of uh, Spock with the Horta, uh, Captain Picard with a phaser, and uh, Worf with a phaser rifle. I uh, can't say that I like these two. The I can think of better things for, for Spock to be doing than talking to a Horta. Uh, but yep, so that's the tour of the box. Um, a little bit dusty on top, so it means it's been sat in that shop for a while. <coughs> oh, bless you, thing. Right, so let's... Uh, Let's pop the camera here, uh, whether it's dark, I, I don't know whether it's dark, so let's pop you over there. I uh, can't see, there we go. Uh, so let's pop it, uh, pop you down there and we'll just have a look at how we'll get into this damn thing. Um, 
do, 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 do. I've had this for a few days, but this is the first time I've actually uh, looked at opening it, so I haven't really done that much by way of prep. Um, yeah, oh, I thought it'd be one of those, you know, sort of things where you have to like unfasten something and then it crops out. But nope, all you have to do, give it a good, just take it off the backing card. The piece of cardboard around here is just literally stuck on with a bit of glue. Uh, so, you know, I, I don't think that'll matter much in the grand scheme of things. So we'll just pop it open. Pop it open and uh, first thing we get is this little little book. Let's have a look in here. I don't know what's in there. It's too thin to be like a comic or something. I bet, it, yeah, it's just promotional materials. Uh, little booklet with promotional materials, uh, models of the various ships, a uh, couple of figures, I wonder how out of date this is, quite a lot I would have thought. Uh, oh, what they call it to send off for, uh, oh, send off feedback and become a member of our collector's club, oh no, you're alright. Uh, oh, some phasers, a uh, tricorder, communicator and a Klingon disruptor um, available. As well as the other figures in this range in better, um, in better pic detailed pictures. As well as oh, um, ah, piggy banks, piggy banks, in the shape of Star Trek characters. Well, that's uh, lovely. Right, let's uh, get on to the main thing. So, let's pop this out. Uh, uh, goodbye, box. You've served your purpose. Oh, so yeah, we've got him out, and oh, that's heavy. Uh, this is the base for the. Uh, diorama Sandy and you have to put it together yourself there's a big cut out here of a footprint for you to put Khan's foot on if you're putting him in that so let's assemble oh my god twisty ties oh plastic twisty ties you know the ones with metal in them uh, that, should, that dates this so we've got the, the command chair here with the the things that fold over uh, that goes in there that goes in there I would have thought if it clips in Give it a push, give it a push, and there we go, in nice and solid. So, yep, that's the command chair, and it's got the arms that you can move them down so you can get to the controls and stuff. Pretty cool. Uh, where are we? Do, 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 do. That's got a twisty tie on it. Where's my clippers? No, those aren't my clippers, that's pliers. What the hell have I done with my clippers? Clippers, where are you? Do, 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 do. I've got so much crap on here. I really should, you know, like tidy up more. Uh, no, seriously, what have I done with over there? Oof. Yeah, that's why you should prep before you start doing videos. But never mind. Uh, click. Hopefully that will just pop out now. Yep, there we go. So that's the that's the rear part of the bridge. Then we've got some more bits down here. Oh, is that how is that held in? Oh, it's a bit of tape. A bit of tape holding that in. Come on. Oh. Do you know, it's almost like when they do stuff like this, they don't want you to take them out of the bag. I mean, why, why, why would you not? Why would you not do that? You know, I mean, I know there's people who like collecting stuff and keeping them in the boxes and stuff, but. If I was to keep this in the fucking box, it would just be like, you know, like it is, you know, it would never, never, you know, look good. So, I'm sure there's probably some instructions somewhere and I'll put this together, but I, uh, well, no, there isn't, there's nothing else. Hmm. Let's have a look. So, that's, that would go in there, I would presume, and that in there. Oh, it's starting to come together. It's uh, the bridge, the bridge of the USS Reliant. There we go. So that's the uprights, and uh, I presume this this goes in here. Match up the tabs to the holes. Weird. One one's gone in, no problem. The other ones don't seem to want to go in. Ah, there we go. Put them in. Push that. Ah, oh, a nice satisfying click when it goes into place. That's great. So that's the display base done. So what we've got left, we've got. Khan's various bits. So we'll just clip him a clip there. I don't think there's any more twisty ties on him. So that's the Khan figure. He's now been born. 
and we shall just put him in there with the the nice big foot shaped cutout and I presume he has a hole in the bottom of his foot because if he doesn't that would be really stupid because he's got a peg on there for you to put his foot in so just put the oh it doesn't want to go in mind you this is all new it's been sat in a sat in his plastic prison for years I think and uh, it's all nice and stiff and everything so that goes in but for some reason it won't sit level oh there we go so yeah so that's him in his pose there that's you know straight out the box pose just you know his foot up on the the command chair plinth or dais or whatever you want to call it just with his arms folded looking a bit grim uh, like he does in the film well to be fair in the film uh, Khan does really have a point uh, when it comes to being grim you know the uh, as he says you know the they put them on SETI Alpha 5 and nobody ever bothered to come and check to make sure they were alright. Uh, so, you know, all the people that were originally on SETI Alpha 5 ended up, you know, more or less all of them ended up dead um, from one thing or another. Um, except for the offspring of those who, the original people who were marooned there. Um, yeah, they, the, the original people who were there all, obviously, you know, they had babies and the babies grew up to all be blonde, look like sort of weird, you know, like some sort of weird Nazi experiment. They all turned into being blonde and muscular and uh, they they went with Khan. Uh, if you've ever read the, uh, the Eugenics Wars books, um, it does go a little into explaining that. There are two Eugenics Wars books which explains Khan's early days. Um, you know, from the 60s until the late 1990s, and then the third book called To Reign in Hell, uh, which basically deals with Khan after his encounter with the Enterprise and their lives on SETI Alpha 5 until the, uh, you know, until the, and uh, you know, the, the disaster that causes the planet to become, you know, rather than being a nice habitable planet, it turns it into basically a, uh, a lifeless desert planet. Uh, deals with that and deals with some of the um, uh, stuff afterwards uh, you know stuff that happened sort of afterwards uh, kind of in, in between Star Trek 2 and Star Trek 3 so there are very good very good books um, you know if you can find them to, to read them I do recommend reading them because they're very very well written and uh, I, I I don't hesitate to say a very good kind of end to the Khan saga the the original Khan saga obviously not the the one where Benedict Cumberbatch is now Khan which ugh, ridiculous it's just that's just ridiculous but yeah so we've popped out all the extra bits so what do we have away with you oh, away with you twisty tie so what do we have we have a pair of legs in a sitting position we have a pointing finger we have a right arm uh, with a clenched fist and bent elbow. We have another head where Khan is looking like he's screaming. A left arm, I think that is. No, that's not. No, hang on, yeah. yeah, I can't tell left from right. That's a left arm, that's a right arm. Right arm with his glove on that he never takes off throughout the film. If you read the uh, Terrain in Hell, it tells you why he wears that glove on his hand. They sort of wrote that in there to explain why he, why he only wears a glove on one hand. and right. It's a very good explanation, though. And this other arm, which is another right arm, where it's bent at the elbow, and he's got his hand up, sort of thing. So, um, let's see. Obviously, you're supposed to pull the figure apart in order to put on these new limbs. So I'm going to attempt to... Going to attempt to pull him apart. The actual figure itself has zero articulation. It's pretty much like the Baron Harkonnen figure I've got. Um, it's not an actual figure. It's more of a statue. Um, but oh, there we go. So the waist, the waist rotates and the head rotates. That's that's how much that's how much articulation you're getting. You're not getting any more. So I'm going to try and oh, there we go. So his legs come off and. Uh, there we go, so I'll put his sitting legs on. Ooh, he doesn't want to sit down. Sit down, Khan. Uh, and I'll just pop him in the chair like this. And uh, yeah, oh, that's pretty good. He, 
he fits in the chair very well and the positioning of his feet helps him to sit up uh, so yeah that's that's pretty good it helps him keep him in place that's nice I like that uh, so how we have a right around with a hand here so I presume it will go on to this one because on, let's have a look. oh yeah we do have a little wrist articulation just because of the way it works so we shall pop off this hand he's got his clenched his clenched fist hand like that and we shall pop on the pointy finger See what we get here. In you go. There we go. He's got a right now. He's got a right arm, uh, left arm. Sorry, with a pointy finger. So um, assuming the arms are going to come off this one because there isn't a replacement body. So it's like, oh yeah. Oof. <laughs> he's like, oh my god. Uh, uh, yeah. My my underlings have failed me again. Surprisingly, the arms are coming off very very easily, which is good. Uh, unlike some other similar figures that where you have removable arms and swappable arms, legs and heads and things where um, removing the arms and, and whatnot is really harrowing that, yeah that's really good that uh, you know where removing the arms and legs and everything is really harrowing uh, you know you you're like oh god it's gonna break it's gonna break it's gonna break and then it, it you know uh, no, that doesn't look very good. This one, uh, no, that just looks like he's. I'm sure there was one of the posers that you know was like on the box where it was like him sort of leaning on the the arm of the chair, but I can't seem to find an arm that would do that. Uh, let me try this straight arm, see what happens. So in goes the arm, or rather not. Go on, in you go. Yeah, that's, that's it. So, plop him back on the throne. Just close the... Oh, you, you can't actually close the... Because the way he sits, you can't actually close the armrests over his legs. They just sort of go about halfway. Um, I put his arm down like that. Uh, but yeah, there, there we have him sat... You know, sat with his finger wagging. As he does when he talks to Captain Kirk and he basically... You know, I've got you now, Captain Kirk. Blah blah blah. Captain Kirk's like, oh fucking hell, you know, where the Enterprise basically gets uh, smashed to shit. Um, yeah, so I'm just gonna change the head now. What I will do at the end is I will take some better. I'll I'll fiddle around with the poses and take some higher quality pictures uh, for you to see. And this time I will actually remember to put them in. So yeah, the head came off. Very little trouble. I'm uh, just looking here. Oh, we have a ball joint for the 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 skull, basically, and a a second ball joint uh, in the neck, which does give some limited mo mobility. That's not bad, but it kind of gets blocked off by by his long hair. So let's uh, let's get the head, the other head on, the screaming head or the shouting head or whatever. No, that's not on. Uh, ah, go and get in. Is that in? Well, obviously not, because the head just fell off. Ah, yeah, I'm remembering one of the reasons why I don't particularly like double uh, double ball joint heads, because when you try and put the head in the top ball joint, the bottom ball joint sort of flops around and makes it quite difficult for you to get the, the damn thing into place. Uh, uh, God damn it, get in. Hold him like this, and then push down really hard. It should go in. Go on! No, oh, it's not having it. God damn it. Who'd have thought a genetically engineered superhuman would in fact be a complete bastard? Go on! There we go. <coughs> Managed to manhandle his head on. Actually, yeah, I think I do quite I, I do quite like that head better than the original one, with the sign of serene expression and this is his more ranty face, so see if we can get him get him into the chair and get him into some sort of pose there. Sort of have him kind of facing side on. Uh, drop his arm down a little bit and have him there. Pointing like that. I haven't tried this arm, I not quite sure how that I'm not quite sure what that will be for, but when I'm trying out different poses I will uh 
I'm trying out different poses. I'm sure I'll find a, a use for it. So yeah, that's the that's Khan on his throne. Well, on his command chair, uh, looking. Uh, Captain Kirk, you're a complete bastard, and I'm going to kill you. And uh, you know, I mean, I know, I know that the the film The Wrath of Khan came out in 1982, but I'm not going to give you any spoilers. You know, even though, let's be honest, you should have seen it by now if you're interested in Star Trek. Um, so yeah. Um, that's that. It is a. It's a. I. I, I fucking love it. Um, it's a great figure. Uh, well, figure, statue, whatever you want to call it. Um, the display base plinth is spot on. I have no complaints about that whatsoever. It looks great. Um, like I said, the only kind of thingy I've got is that you can't put the the, the armrests properly over. But I can live with that. Um, the figure of Khan himself superbly detailed uh, very very lifelike and with the arms legs and whatever there's plenty of scope for a variety of nice poses which hopefully I will be able to capture on film uh, when I take the photographs uh, for £13 absolute bargain um, like I say the only other time I've seen this figure available it was £35 plus a fair bit of postage on top um, and it was strange that my friend just happened to encounter it in a random shop in Blackpool um, so yeah I'm happy with this if you have a Star Trek figure collection or you like Star Trek this one is definitely a recommended figure to try and get hold of if you can um, it would look great amongst any Star Trek collection one the, the you know the classic bad guy from both the original series and the movie series um, you know, people say, well, the Klingons are the main bad guys. Yes, but they're the, the, they're the bad people. They're the, the bad race in it, the, the bad guys. Whereas this is the bad guy. Um, there aren't that many other bad bad guys from the original series that you could name as being memorable. There are some. Uh, Professor Lazarus, for example, who's... Well, he might be a bad guy, he might be a good guy. Depends which universe you're in. You know, obviously then you've got the Mirror Universe. You know, Mirror, Spur Mirror Spock, Mirror Kirk... Um, whose story was brilliantly brought to an end by Star Trek Continues, starring Vic Mignogna as Captain Kirk stuff. Their take on the the end of uh, their, their take on the what happened after the episode Mirror Mirror um, is brilliant. Um, it's just a shame that Paramount are being dicks about uh, what can and can't be Star Trek. Uh, it's not our fault that Discovery was crap. So yeah, Khan, Khan. Nothing more to say about him, really. It's Khan. Pictures coming next.